Day by day, it feels like coronavirus is closing in. As its reach extends throughout Europe, the English Channel has rarely felt so narrow. Today, nervous MPs brought the Health Secretary before the Commons. Secretary of State, Matt Hancock. We have a clear four-part plan to respond to the outbreak of this disease. Contain, delay, research and mitigate. We're taking all necessary measures to minimise the risks to the public. Some say the government has been disengaged, but however many cobras are convened, there are limits to today's politicians' power. The British state has already been preparing for this for years. At the moment, um, thousands of tests um, are being rolled out for suspected cases. Over 7,000 people have been tested. Only 13 have been tested positively. Um, but um, public information and advice um, has already gone out um, to all of those who might need to have it, to schools, to employers, um, to first responders, um, and to anybody who might come into contact with someone who might be suspected of having coronavirus, so that everybody can be ready should we reach the stage where we do need to go from the current mo uh, point where we're in containment and detection mode to um, the treat and escalation mode, which is the next phase. How the government will respond in that escalation mode is laid out in NHS England's Emergency Preparedness, Resilience and Response Framework, the document which sets out the expectations of each part of the health service in case of a major incident. A pandemic would be classified as Alert Level 4, the most serious, where NHS England may take control of all NHS resources across the country, i.e. centralised control of all NHS trusts. In practice, this might mean the establishment of swab squads to test people at home, political agreement for the postponement of hospital admissions to free up intensive care beds, and the cancellation of non-urgent operations, perhaps on a scale we haven't yet seen. Right now, the government wants to try and ensure that the escalation is delayed for as long as possible. Some of the things the NHS does to cope with a normal winter are the same sorts of things that you see people do in the context of, of planning for a, 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 an influenza outbreak. So, for example, if a, if, the, if a hospital comes under pressure, it will consider whether it needs to stop delivering some of its normal services temporarily. And every winter we see the NHS for a period of time stop doing planned surgery. The problem is, there's probably not much the government can do to delay it for too long. The government's 2011 influenza strategy made clear that if containment fails, even drastic measures won't work, saying even a 99.9% .9 travel restriction might delay a pandemic wave by only two months. Britain has dealt with something like this before, albeit on a less profound scale, with the 2009 swine flu outbreak. But swine flu was less infectious than COVID-19, more easily contained. But the differences aren't just virological. Crucially, they're political too. The NHS, the public realm in general, was a very different place back in 2009. Waiting lists were much shorter, financial pressures on the system much slighter. At the time, relatively few operations were even cancelled. Today, the slack in the system, its ability to deal with a major crisis is much reduced. The new government is suddenly nervous. It has looked so imperial, so powerful. But for the first time in its short life, it is about to confront something it can shape but cannot control. 